Good evening, Namaskar. I, Kriti Vadera, would like to welcome all the teachers, learners, educators, students to CIET and CRD's live phone in program. And you are watching us live on PME with their channel number 1 to 12. This session is going to be for a webinar session where we discuss various ICT tools. But uh, NCRT has decided to deliver cyber safety webinars where we can learn about cyber safety, what are the measures and precautions to be taken uh, while being in this digital era. So these webinars will be delivered every Friday for you all viewers and today we will be discussing about basics of online safety, the very basics which we have to follow uh, in being in this digital time, digital, digitalization of education I would say. And the expert who is joining us today for this particular webinar, I would like to introduce Ms. Janice Varghese. She is Manager Communications and Training from Cyber Peace Foundation. I welcome you, Ms. Varghese, for today's webinar. Thank you. And before we start with today's webinar, viewers, I would like to remind you here that if you have any questions, any queries, then please do let us know. You can dial on our toll-free number. The number would be 8800 to watch the live streaming of this program, you may log into our official YouTube channel by the name of NCRT Official and there also in the live chat box you may send all your suggestions and questions to us. There is one more medium through which you can contact us, kindly mail all your suggestions and questions to trainings at cit.nic.in. So let's begin with today's webinar where we will be learning about basics of online safety. I welcome you again Ms. Varghese. So what it is all about, I guess it's uh, need of the hour to learn about the basics of online safety in this digital time. What would you say about this? Absolutely. I think over the past one year, because of COVID mostly, we have all shifted to online mediums. Of course, all these sessions have always been happening, but now this is the only way left for us to learn. Somewhere it's good, the internet and technology has definitely helped us maintain our routines despite COVID. But right. at the same time, the, the amount of risks that we face has increased tremendously. Criminals have found a million new ways to, to hack us, to trap us, to trick, with, to trick us. So it's very important to understand what the internet is offering us. It's, imp important to, it's important to protect ourselves, our data, so that we don't fall prey to any of these scams. And that's precisely what we'll talk about today. Okay, so I guess we should start now. You may proceed with the presentation so that our viewers can gain maximum out of today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you so very much once again for inviting me. Uh, NCRT is a very dear friend of our organization and we always, you know, look forward to such, uh, such, such collaborations. So hi everyone. Good evening. My name is Janice. I am a cyber lawyer working with Cyber Peace Foundation and our organization, we primarily work in the cybersecurity domain and capacity building is one of our major verticals. So we have undertaken a lot of initiatives and many of them have been in collaboration with NCERT. So the e-Raksha competition, all of you are already aware of. Uh, so so we've already launched the competition and we hope a lot of you will be sending in your entries and your ideas about cybersecurity and we'll get to learn something new from you as well. So uh, beginning the presentation very quickly, the first thing to understand when we talk about cyber safety is the fact that everything is dependent on data. So when we are online, when we are using a social media platform, when we are using a chat application, all of us share information with the platform and we get some information in return. So cyberspace, in short, we can say is based on information. Now, many times we don't understand how valuable this information is and we don't take all the steps needed to keep it protected. And this is precisely why many times we get compromised, our data gets stolen. So through this presentation, we will talk a little bit about how criminals or um, you know, you know, these people may try to steal your information. What are the most commonly used attacks? We'll talk about some relevant case studies so that none of us ever fall prey to these scams again. Now, uh, data is very important. Why? Because if anybody gets your information, they can use it against you. Let me give you a very simple example. So uh, my name is Janice, you can see me right here. If you search for me online, you might find my pictures, you might find videos of me, you might find my email address and other information about me. If a criminal catches hold of this information, they can create duplicate accounts in my name, they can create duplicate uh, profiles in my name, and they can commit crimes with others. Now, because my name, my email address, my information is used, 
if the police catch hold of this person they'll come knocking at my door because it's my photo it's my name which is why it becomes important for us to protect our information so things as simple as your photographs your videos your username passwords if these are um, accessed by a criminal they can use it against you but before we move into how exactly they can do this let's talk about some of the most recent attacks that we have seen these are very common uh, ways using which criminals may try to steal your information and it's important to know about these so that we don't fall prey to any of these scams the first attack that we should know about is called phishing so how a phishing attack works is a person may send you a link and they might put a very interesting story next to it or they might put something scary along with it so one case of a phishing attack someone tried with me you know it happened a couple of months back and how it happened was so this very dear friend of mine um, i received a message from her account on facebook and she said hi janis i am participating in a singing competition and this is the video of my song and i would i, I would like you to vote for my song I said sure you're a very dear friend why not I clicked on the link and the minute I clicked on the link a login page of this kind opened up now 90% people would believe this login page they would enter their details thinking this is the only way to view the video but the actual story was there was no singing competition there was no video the person who was messaging me me wasn't really my friend somebody had gained access to her account and was misusing her profile to gain my login credentials as well now how did this happen through a phishing attack links are shared and the minute you click on the link you will get to see a fake login page what you see right now on the screen this is not the actual facebook login page somebody has created a fake page that looks like the facebook page so that we fall prey to it we we believe it and we end up entering our username and our password please be aware of such links if you enter your details here you are literally giving it away to the criminal on a plate so no matter what link you click on if it takes you to a login page of any kind where you have to enter your username and password please close the link immediately google chrome and other browsers they have become more um, more proactive now if you do click on a phishing link you will you'll get a warning like this so if you see warnings saying that the site may be deceptive please close them immediately now it's not necessary that every single site will be flagged like this but most phishing sites will be flagged which is why it's our responsibility to check the link that people are sending us and make sure you know what the link is for if an unknown person is sharing a link do not open it under any circumstances so phishing can take a different form as well and can happen through calls too This variant of phishing is called wishing or voice phishing. You may have come across all of these you know random calls that people get and they say are sir you have won KBC lottery ma'am you have won the coca cola lottery and they want to give you 25 lakh rupees and all they need from you is your account number your UPI pin your card details. So this is a trick using which people would try to get information from you on a phone call. So phishing can happen through links phishing can also happen through calls. So if anybody calls you and gives you you know and claims that you have won a lottery you have won an award a reward please make sure that you check the authenticity without applying in a lottery there are no chances that you would win it nobody would randomly want to give you 10 rupees let alone 25 lakh rupees so no matter who calls you no matter who they claim to be do not share any personal information that may be used against you so information like your account number your the aadhar card number your card details um your location your date of birth any information that is personal that is unique to you do not share that with anybody the third and another interesting way of stealing information is through a smishing attack smishing again is a variant of phishing happens mostly through sms so people will send you smss with very interesting stories in them same way same modus operandi there will be a link at the bottom and they'll try to trick you to clicking into the link and the minute you click on the link same story it will take you to a fake login page and you would be very much tempted to enter your details because they'll either be giving you an award or maybe your money has come back or some story of that kind and the minute you enter your details all the money from your account may be stolen or your accounts may get compromised So these are some very common methods used by criminals these days and these cases are on the rise. 
another important technique that you should be aware of is social engineering social engineering isn't a bad process or an evil process in itself but it is a method which is used for a lot of illegal activities let me give you a very interesting example so a couple of weeks back we all celebrated mother's day i bought a few gifts for my mother and unfortunately they were not delivered on time so mother's day was on a sunday uh, it wasn't delivered on that day it wasn't delivered for the next 20 days i tried calling customer care i tried filing a complaint with the customer care team but nobody responded finally i got really frustrated and i decided to file a complaint with the consumer forum i was searching online and i came across this particular website and this is not a government approved website it's just a random forum which has been opened up by people so that others can share their problems so this one very interesting case was of this person this one user had placed an order on flipkart they had purchased a mixi grinder and unfortunately the product was defective uh, and customer care was not responding they were unable to get the product replaced or the money refunded this person got really angry and they posted the entire story on this website now the most interesting part is along with the entire situation that that happened the entire case they also shared some personal information so this person wrote my name is so and so i bought an a, a mixi from this website this is my order id this is my mobile number this is my card number and this was the amount that i paid now the problem is all this information is public anybody can call this person up pretend to be from flipkart customer care quote the, the order id quote the problem and trick them into giving into getting their details i mean i could do it too which is why whatever you are sharing online make sure it's not visible to everybody if you're making a you know, if you if you're updating a status or putting up a photo on facebook or instagram keep it visible to your friends only and even if you are putting you know putting up a complaint of this kind on social media make sure you don't share personal information you don't have to share your order id or your payment details or your address publicly you can always contact the company through private messaging and you can share your details there but posting anything publicly may be problematic now what is social engineering i didn't explain that so social engineering is exactly this people collect information that you're sharing publicly and they use it against you so if somebody knows what you like what you dislike they can create fake pages based on those things and try to trick you so whatever you are sharing online on any platform make sure it cannot be used against you and the best strategy is to control the audience best strategy is not to make anything public to all the users on the platform the last attack that you should be aware of is malware attacks malware attacks are on the rise just recently in america there was a huge malware attack this gas uh, that gas supply company called a colonial gas pipeline they were hit by a ransomware which i'll explain in a minute they were hit by a ransomware all their systems went uh, offline there was disruption in gas supply and there was major panic across various states in the us so malware attacks can shut down companies they can result in entire countries stopping right which is why understanding a malware attack how it happens and protecting ourselves is important first things first what does a malware mean malware stands for malicious software so software which has been created with the intent to disrupt services to steal your data to modify your data or to destroy your system to break into your account all of this is called a malware most commonly it is of three types ransomware keyloggers and spyware So ransomware is the kind of malware which gets installed on your device and it will lock all your files. It locks your files, it will encrypt your files and it will say listen, I have access to all your information. If you want me to unlock your files, give me 1 million dollars or give me 10 lakh rupees. They'll demand a ransom in exchange of giving you back access to your device and your files. So this is what a ransomware means. The second kind is a keylogger. What a keylogger does is once it gets installed on your device, it attaches itself to your mobile's keyboard. Now all of us who use smartphones, you might have noticed there is a virtual keyboard in your phones using which you type. So a keylogger attaches itself to your mobile's keyboard and whatever you type, the keylogger starts copying it. Take a second and think about it yourself. On an average day, you type so many things using your mobile keyboard, from your passwords to your OTPs to your uh, card number to your so many things we type using our keyboards. So, if there is a keylogger in our devices, 
is going to steal all this information. So that's the second kind of malware. The third and the most dangerous kind of malware is spyware. In fact, recently there was a spyware which was detected in a lot of applications. Let me quickly show you what I'm talking about. So uh, just recently, a lot of applications were taken down by Google on Play Store. Here is a list. So we did a blog on this entire uh, case. So a lot of applications were taken down by Google Play Store. Why? Because these applications had spyware in them. What does spyware mean and why is it dangerous? Spyware is a kind of malware which takes access to your mobile's hardware. Now our mobiles, they have cameras in the front, they have cameras in the back, they have microphones, uh, they have so much data in them. So spyware takes access to all this information and starts using it against you. So all these applications that you see on the screen, they all contained a malware, which is called the Joker malware. All these applications will take permissions which are not even needed for the application to function. For example, all these applications took permission to read SMSs. And a lot of confidential information is present in our SMSs. So they took the access of SMSs in all the user's devices who had installed these apps. They read the SMSs, they took access to their contacts, and all this information was out there publicly, right? So uh, these are the different kinds of malware. Understanding what these are, keeping ourselves safe is very, very important. Now you may wonder how exactly does malware get installed in one's device? Malware attacks are most commonly carried out through links and through attachments. So similar to phishing, if somebody sends you a link, just because someone sent you a link does not mean you open it. Simply clicking on a link may, may result in malware getting installed on your devices. So no matter who is sending you the link, call them up, ask them what the link is for. Once you know what the purpose of sharing the link is, only then should you proceed and click on it. Same for attachments. You know, so many mails we receive in a day and so many mails have attachments in them. Just because an attachment is sent to you does not mean you should open it. Malware has become so complex now, you don't need to download attachments anymore. You simply open an attachment and the malware gets installed on your devices. So please be a little careful and as a precautionary measure, you can install a good antivirus software or a good anti-malware software in your devices. So Kaspersky, Kaspersky Quick Heal, McAfee, Norton, these are some really popular companies who develop good antivirus solutions. So similarly, uh, you know, you can also get a good anti-malware solution. Most of them are paid. Please don't go after free versions because they're not really good. They don't give you very good security. So save some money up, talk to your parents, talk to your colleagues, maybe collect some money together, get a good antivirus solution, a good anti-malware solution for yourself and your devices will stay protected. In addition to keeping, my, keeping in mind these attacks, you also have to take other precautions so that your data or your identities are not compromised in any way. So we spoke about four or five attacks and now we'll talk about some precautionary measures that we should keep in mind. The first is being reasonable. Do not believe everything that you see online. Again, just because a website is saying something does not mean it's true. Just because you read a message somewhere claiming something happened does not mean it's true. These days, there are so many instances of fake news, especially in the context of COVID-19. My dear friend, let me tell you something. Sharing false information about a pandemic or a natural disaster is actually a punishable offense, right? Punishable for up to three years. So three years of jail time can be awarded to people who are sharing information that is false about COVID-19. So be very careful about the information that you're sharing. Whatever forwards that you receive on WhatsApp, on Facebook, any application, do a quick cross check yourself. How to cross check, you may wonder, you can simply search on Google. So if today somebody forwards a message to me on some chat application saying that aliens came to earth and were abducting cows, before I believe the message my friend shared, I would do a simple Google search. Are aliens abducting cows? Now this may seem like a very ridiculous example, but this is a simple process that you can use yourself. Do a simple Google search if the news is true or not, and you'll get the solution. 
In addition to these, this, these are some websites that I have quickly zoomed into. You can take a note of all these websites. These people have created websites that are dedicated to busting fake news. So Alt News, Boom Life, Fact Checker, there are many more. So the government of India has launched Press Information Bureau. They give you correct information. So you can follow these websites, you can follow their social media handles. And at any point, if any piece of information goes viral, these people pick it up, they will verify if it's true or not, and they will post the correct information on their handles and on their website. So you can follow these websites and you can follow these people to ensure you know what is to be believed and what is not. Other than this, in the context of downloading as well, being reasonable is very, very important. These days, because all of us are highly dependent on the internet, we are doing everything online, from banking to shopping to, to getting food, everything is happening through online platforms. So knowing how to identify a genuine app has become equally important. Net banking is something all of us are doing these days, and I'm quite happy with it. Honestly, I don't like going and standing in queues in banks. So my life definitely has become easier because of net banking, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree. But the challenge is knowing which app is genuine. There are lots of people who are creating fake applications and floating it on your Play Store, App Store, and all your third-party app stores. And if we download a fraudulent app, Again, it may result in us losing our data and criminals stealing money from our accounts. So knowing how to identify the genuine app is what we'll talk about in this slide. The first tip is please use trusted sources only. If you are using an Android mobile, please use a Play Store. If you're using an Apple device, use App Store. For your laptops, for your Windows systems, use Microsoft Store. These are the only trusted sources from where you should download an application. If you search on Google like this, so I wanted to install uh, WhatsApp a couple of months back when I changed my device. I can search on Google and I'll find it on multiple websites as well. But doing this, my dear friends, is highly, highly risky. A lot of people after PUBG was banned, they downloaded PUBG from these random websites, but these are not genuine applications. They may steal your data, they may install malware in your devices, and your data may get compromised. So I know free things are very attractive, but no free application is worth your data. So any application you want, be it for your banking needs, be it for your shopping purposes, be it for your gaming, make sure you are using trusted sources. Other than this, you also have to check if the app is genuine or not. Let me give you a quick example of how you can do that. So I have an account uh, with HDFC. And I wanted to install uh, the, HDFC, the HDFC mobile banking app. So I went to Play Store and I searched. I simply put HDFC net banking. And you can see there are n number of applications available. All of them say HDFC. All of them show the same logo. So how do you know which app is genuine? The first thing to look for is this green tick mark. I hope it's visible to everybody. I've zoomed in quickly for a second. This green tick mark that you see next to the first application means the app has been verified by Google Play Store, right? So I open up this app. Let me show you some more things to look out for. So in addition to looking for the green tick mark, you also have to check the developer. The name of this application is HDFC Mobile Banking Money Transfer and Bill Pay. It has been created by HDFC Bank. There you go. This is the name of you will get more information. So HDFC has created all these applications. You can even check more information about the developer. Go right to the bottom and there you go. All the additional information is available here. So you can see this is offered by HDFC Bank. You have all the information about the developer here. You can visit their website and cross check if they are genuine or not. Now you may wonder, what if a criminal does this? What if a criminal creates a fake website and puts the name HDFC Bank there as the developer. This is not possible because the Play Store team, they're pretty strict. They cross-check if the developer is genuine or not. So they will check on their own, make sure the developer is putting their real name before they upload the app. So you can, without any hesitation, look at the developer details and you can believe the information which is given here. 
So this app is genuinely created by HDFC Bank and you have the green tick mark at the corner, which means this app is genuine, you can use it. Do the same for games as well. Whatever applications you are using, check where you're downloading it from, check the developer details. And lastly, never download from untrusted sources. A lot of people, they have default stores in their mobiles. For example, I have a Redmi phone. Redmi offers MI store, get apps. So you can download from there, but I would recommend still using Play Store, App Store. Because these two platforms, they are pretty strict. Their policies are pretty strict. They make sure the applications are verified before they are made available. Additionally, interesting, uh, interesting thing for all you Android users to check out, Play Store has a wonderful feature called Play Protect, P-L-A-Y-P-R-O-T-E-C-T. -E Play Protect lets you verify if an application is safe or not. So make sure you scan your devices using Play Protect to identify if there is any malicious or unsafe app in your phone. And if you find an unsafe app, remove it immediately. Um, other than this, whenever you're making payments online, again, these scams are on the rise these days. A lot of fake websites are popping up and they are going to give you unbelievable offers. So iPhones worth one lakh, they are selling for just 4,000 rupees. Please don't believe these offers. They won't even send you an empty box. They'll just steal your money, block you and get away with it. So if you're trying to place an order on a website, do the same process, you know, follow the same process. Check the URL, which is the link at the top check the reviews, read the re reviews online, do a simple Google search. So let's say if you want to place an order with Mintra, Mintra is a popular company, but I'm just giving you a relevant example. Do a simple Google search, mintra.com reviews. You'll get to read what people feel about the website and you can check if you should trust it or not. These are some simple things to keep in mind. Another golden tip to follow and live by is being responsible when you're online. Again, just because the internet is a free space does not mean we can share whatever we feel like. Of course, all of us have the freedom to share our opinions, to share experiences from our lives, but it does not mean you tell the entire world where you have gone for your summer vacation. Because if you do that, criminals know your house is empty and it's a good time to loot your house. And this has actually happened with a lot of people. So do not make a lot of information available about yourself because it can be used against you. So things like your location, things like what you like, what you don't like, uh, things like your date of birth, your, your contact information, your addresses, these are meant for your eyes only and should not be made public on any platform. Uh, before we move to the last segment for the presentation, one more quick tip to keep in mind. In addition to using devices, uh, finding a balance is also very, very important. So how can you find the balance between online and offline? Now, because of the COVID situation, all of us are using the internet a lot more than before. And it's, it's, you know, it's become an obligation. All our classes are happening online. At least all of my meetings happen online. So almost the entire day, I'm glued to a screen. But how exactly can I try to balance my usage and reduce my screen time? So uh, again, one, one tip to keep in mind is technology should be adding value to our lives, not distracting us from it. So you can identify some strategies for yourself. First step is assessing your usage. You can go to Facebook. You can check out how much time you're actually spending on Facebook. I used to think I spend, let's say, 30 minutes online, but my actual usage is two hours and 12 minutes. It's triple, quadruple of what I thought it was. Same for Instagram in the settings. Go to account, go to your activity. You can check out how much time you actually spend on the application. So this, make this a quick activity for yourself and your family members and your friends. Before you check out your actual time, just write down how much time you think you spend on the app and then match. I hope you assume, you know, you, you write on the correct time, but at least mine was way off. So coming to the strategies, enough about problems, what to do about it. This is a wonderful application created by Google. It is called the Digital Wellbeing app. A lot of phones have this app installed by default. Otherwise, you can always download it separately. This app uh, gives you an idea of how much time you're spending on different applications. So I checked out my time, you know, my, my entire um, dashboard a couple of days back. I was spending the most time on Netflix and Hotstar. I watch movies and TV shows a lot. And the next uh, most common activity was Instagram and then a lot of time on WhatsApp. So you can check out how much time you're spending on different applications. And accordingly, you can use strategies to balance your time. Some very cool strategies that you know this, this app itself offers is setting a timer. 
if you feel you spend a lot of time let's say playing a game if you i for one i love angry birds i spend a lot of time on that game so i have put a timer of 30 minutes on angry birds which means every day i cannot use angry birds for more than 30 minutes so i can use it for 30 minutes in one go or i can play it three times for 10 minutes each two times three minutes each your your decision but do set a timer on applications which you think you spend a lot of time on this will help you enjoy technology but also find a balance very quickly move into the last segment for today's session which is building resilience the only way to build resilience is knowing what cyber crimes are understanding how they happen and knowing how to report these crimes so in the first half an hour the, you know the previous slides were all about uh, how people will try to steal your data how you can stay safe but what if something goes wrong what do you do then The first thing to do is understanding what activities are illegal under Indian laws. Now I am a lawyer so I remember all these activities I remember all these sections. I don't expect you to remember what section talks about what but at least the activities which are illegal. It would be good if you make a note of these things so that if ever this happens to you you immediately know it's a crime and you file a complaint. So very quickly if somebody is repeatedly calling you somebody is repeatedly bothering you you've said listen I don't want to talk to you. still if they are calling you texting you illegal you can file a complaint if somebody creates duplicate accounts in your name absolutely illegal you can file a complaint so these are some important laws that you should be aware of you can take a screenshot of this or you can just make a note of these things or you can always watch it later this video is going to be there on the channel forever so you can uh, make a note of these things anybody gains access to your computer your device your account without your permission absolutely illegal file a complaint and if this happens to you you can actually recover your accounts as well just remember the key terms to search so go to the internet go to google chrome and do a quick google search facebook space hacked account let's say if your facebook gets hacked do a google search facebook space hacked you will find a wonderful form to fill up fill it up the hacked account will be shut down but if you want to gain access you simply search again for the same keywords you will find an entire document by facebook which gives you all the options that you can use to recover access so remembering the keywords is very very important all the problems that you may face online there are ways to solve those problems all by yourself remember the keywords to search and you will find the solution so once again for hacked accounts same for instagram simply search platform name space hacked you will find all the options to recover access to your account if you are unable to recover access you will find the option to report it and shut it down so that the person who has broken into your account cannot misuse it any further second is creating impersonated or fake profiles please remember anybody pretends to be you on any social media platform absolutely illegal you can file a complaint this is called impersonation punishable for 3 years please remember the difference between impersonation and fake profiles somebody creates a profile in your name it is not a fake profile fake profiles are those which are created in the name of non human entities so on facebook if i create an account for my cat it's a fake profile because facebook does not allow accounts for cats similarly if i create an account for my business it's a fake account because facebook does not support accounts for businesses which is why we have the option of creating pages so understand what is allowed on a platform and what is not so that you can you know you can behave appropriately on the platform and you can stay safe so creating impersonated accounts absolutely illegal you want to shut it down simply search on google platform name space impersonation you will find these wonderful forms for facebook similarly a form for instagram fill them up it does not matter if you have a profile on these platforms or not Let's say I am not on Instagram, I am not on Facebook, but somebody creates a duplicate account in my name. You can still fill up these forms. Within 24 hours, the accounts will be shut down. Next, cyber stalking again something you all should be aware of, especially children. Anybody below the age of 18, any human being is repeatedly calling you, texting you, troubling you again and again. You have said, "Listen, I am not interested. Don't talk to me. Don't bother me." They're still troubling you. They're still pestering you. Illegal, punishable for three years. Take action. File a complaint. next uh, anybody is blackmailing you intimidating you in any way you know troubling you threatening you send me pictures or i will hurt you i will hurt your family members send me money or i will leak your photos any anything of this kind happens with you please remember it's not your fault you're just the victim in this case 
you 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 are not at fault you didn't do anything wrong but the person who is behaving this manner in this manner is is a criminal what they're doing is absolutely wrong please speak up the biggest reason why criminals get away with crimes is because when they commit a crime the person who is you know bearing the brunt of it who's who's the victim they don't speak about it because we feel scared what if our parents blame us what if society blames us you know we uh, we we will be ashamed will be insulted we will lose our reputation so because of all these fears people don't file complaints but don't let that happen to you very quickly in the next 2 minutes i'll talk about the different ways of filing complaints and then we'll take up any questions any of you may have so the the best way to file a complaint is going to the nearest police station so uh, different states you know many states have uh, cyber police stations as well but police stations you will definitely find wherever you are So let's say I am sitting in Delhi, and whichever locality I am in, there is going to be a relevant police station for that area. So I will go to the police station in writing. You will you will describe the incident. You will give the complaint in writing. The police will file an FIR and give you a copy. If your age is below 18, you don't have to go to the police station. You can simply dial 100. We will also be sharing some special helplines that children can reach out to. the police will come to you they will take your statement they will make sure you are comfortable and your matter will be resolved so nearest police station contact the police file an fir worst case scenario if an fir is refused for whatever reason if a, if a complaint is not filed but you know that a crime happened you can escalate the matter by reaching out to somebody called the superintendent of police the sp or the dcp different states have different positions so in delhi we have dcps not sps but in other states we have sps so simply search online whichever state you are in search for the police's website look out for the information for the for the for the um, higher authorities you'll find it all online the commissioners the deputy commissioners all the information is there on the government websites find the information call them up write a mail tell them what went wrong tell them that you weren't able to file a complaint in the police station and they will definitely help you out So next time, if you don't get an FIR in the first attempt, don't get disheartened. I have given you one more way to make sure a complaint is filed. Additionally, if for any reason you are uncomfortable visiting a police station, there are wonderful portals where that have been set up. So specifically for cyber crime, you can go to cybercrime. gov. in. This has been set up by the Ministry of Home Affairs specifically for cyber crime. Go to this portal, special section for women and children. Any woman, any child is troubled online. any any you know you're being sexually abused in any way be it in the be it, you know through a platform through an application you can file a complaint here finally for all uh, for all the children out there anybody below the age of 18 there's a special portal which has been set up this is called the poxo e box you can simply search on google for poxo e box go to the first link this is a portal which has been set up by the national commission for protection of child rights Okay, you can simply visit the website. Click on the arrow. Very simple, straightforward form you will find. Fill up the form. Choose how you are being troubled. Somebody is blackmailing you, happening through the internet. Whatever situation you are in, choose the situation. Enter your basic details. Click on submit. The complaint goes directly to the commission, which is the apex body. It is the highest body in India when we talk about child rights. They will take cognizance of your complaint and they will direct the police to take action accordingly. So with this we come to the end of the session I hope you all learned something new today apologies if I was rushing through like a train but we had limited time but a lot of information to share with all of you any questions if you have we can maybe take them up in the remaining 5 minutes uh, otherwise Mr. Uh, indeed it was helpful for each one of us who was watching this webinar I guess you rushed it but each uh, word which you said was relevant to each one of us I I would say and now in the end uh, last few minutes when uh, we are left uh, with uh, you just said that we can report the, these you know uh, any issue if we face in terms of hacking in terms of fake profiles on facebook on instagram on all social media platforms we have yes. this sort of facility available to yes. us so what actually happens after that when we are reporting on social media Brilliant question. I actually missed it during the session as well. So reporting, as I mentioned, you can go to the police and report to the police. But many times you may come across behavior or activities which are inappropriate but not really illegal, right? So in these situations, platforms give you the option of reporting to them. 
anything you wish to report, be it a person's account, be it a post, a photo, a video, you will find three dots on the right top corner. So these three dots are your solution to problems on platforms. Look for these three dots, you will find the option to report. Click on report, you will find a series of reasons. Now this, my dear friends, is the most crucial step. Do not report things randomly. Make sure you choose the right reason. Click on the right reason why you are reporting that profile, that content. The report is received by the platform. There are people sitting, you know, they have relevant departments. There are people sitting or they use AI to do this. They will try to make sense of what you have reported and whether it's wrong. And if they feel the content or the person you have reported is indeed against the rules of the platform, they remove the profile or they, shut, or they remove the content. So this right. is what happens. Yeah. And uh, if I ask you about, see, um, in this pandemic time, we have came across so many, uh, you know, incidents when people are writing on their social media platforms that this is a similar account made on my name, that my account yes. has been hacked, people are asking for some funds to raise some funds. So these kind of, uh, you know, statements I have, even I have personally faced, I've seen. Right. So what to do when some sort of social media account has been hacked by some hacker? What to do after that? Right. So if you're already on the profile, if you're already on a platform, I would recommend that every few weeks you just simply search for your name because okay. many times a duplicate account may exist and you won't even be aware. Right. So keep checking regularly if anybody else is using your name and your photo. Now, Janice Varghese, there may be other people with this name, but the same face, highly likely, unlikely. So you check out your own name. If you find duplicate accounts, you can report them. Same process. Click on the three dots and choose the correct reason, which is impersonation. Do not okay. call these accounts fake accounts. Misconception. Right. If you click it as if you report it as fake, action won't be taken. So report right. it as impersonation. They'll be shut down within 24 hours. Okay. Ms. Vargas, it was so wonderful to have you for today's webinar. I personally learned many things about uh, basic concepts of uh, safety when we are into this digital era. I really thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And for all the questions that are pending, we have a WhatsApp helpline that runs. The number is right there on the screen. I know many problems you can't talk about publicly. You may not feel comfortable. Drop us a message at this number on WhatsApp. My team and I will be happy to help you. Once again, big thank you to you for being a wonderful host. Thank you to NCRT and we hope we can do many more sessions in the near future. It thank was you. so wonderful to have you. And our viewers can indeed uh, write to us as well if they have any questions. Uh, the email ID would be training at the CIT.NIC.N. So that was from today's webinar. It was such a wonderful webinar where we learned about the basic concepts of being online in this pandemic time. Uh, and remain connected to for the next session. We will be discussing about a guidance and counseling uh, topic in next Sayyok session. Remain connected. We are coming back just in a short while.